Hi, how's everybody doing today? Um, as discussed, my name's Howard Weisberg. I'm the, currently the Associate City Engineer for Meriden. Uh, in Meriden, I have experience with hot in place recycling, stress absorbing membrane, uh, which we'll refer to as SAMI here, ultra thin bonded wearing course, which I still call Novachip and we'll probably call Novachip throughout the pro uh, presentation. I'll try to call it thin overlay. Also, microsurface. Uh, when I was in New Haven, we did a little experimenting with hot in place recycling and uh, some microsurfacing and Nova chip. Uh, when I was down in Maryland, though, they did pretty much everything. They did cape seals, chip seals, microsurfacing, slurry seals, cold in place recycling, pretty much everything. Um, a lot of that hasn't made its way up here yet. A uh, little, bit, little bit about the city of Meriden. We have 190 miles of roads. We're in central Connecticut, uh, 60,000 residents. We have pavement inspections going back to 1995. VHB has done five cycles of pavement inspection for us, so we have a lot of data. Our most recent pavement uh, conditions, it was actually 2000, end of 2015, early 2016. Our average condition was a 73. Uh, we haven't talked about PCIs much at this conference today. Um, PCIs is an aggregate of the base condition and surface condition. It's scale of essentially zero to 100. New roads are 100. Real bad roads are 30. Uh, a lot of our decisions are going to be based on these PCI numbers. Uh, VHB's study indicated that we needed two and a half million dollars a year to maintain a PCI of 73. Unfortunately, I get about a million dollars a year uh, for paving. This comes from a various, uh, various sources. We get city bond funds in the neighborhood of about 500,000 a year. And with the exception of last year, we get state funding. Uh, last year was kind of a hit when we didn't get any state funding. Um, taken out of this is I do have to give money to our highway department for patching and, and small little road projects, so sometimes it's actually less. Uh, when available, we do try to grab special funds as we can and do little side projects with them. Just for a comparison, our PCI in 2010, the last time they did a condition inspection, was 76, so we are on a uh, downward trend. Um, this next slide is from VHB's report that they provided for us uh, after uh, the 2015 inspections. You can see I've circled two areas. The area on the right uh, is 45 miles of road that is a PCI of 71 to 80. That's really that ideal range for um, pavement preservation. The uh, box to the left of it is 56 to 70. That's kind of the lower range of pavement preservation. That represents half of our roadway network in that key, key demographic for, for doing some preservation. Um, since nobody is here from VHB, I'll let you guys know that we have done pavement preservation on the uh, 31 to 35 and uh, 41 to 45 as well, which we'll discuss a little bit later. Um, they're never really happy when I, when I mention that. Um, this is our paving backlog. We have a 40 million, close to $40 million paving backlog. Um, you can see how it's broken down by treatment. This would be if I wanted to bond out the entire road network to get the road network to 100, this is what it would cost. Mill and overlay makes up about 50% of this entire uh, backlog. Uh, base rehabilitation, 25%. Crack seal, 2%. And pavement preservation treatments, they have at uh, 23%. That gives us the close to 190 miles worth of road. Um, I like to call this my bad news chart. Uh, when we saw this, I brought this to my bosses and we all essentially just cried. 73 is where our PCI currently is. Uh, five years out to get a PCI of 78, I would need approximately $4 million. Steve, was this, were you part of this one or was this, uh, this post you? Okay, um, 76 is my want, that's the green line. That would cost three and a half million dollars for me to get to maintain what I currently am at, which is not necessarily a great condition already, a 73, is my need. That would cost two and a half. And the blue, the sad blue line is my 68. That's what I'm getting. Um, that's one million a year. As you can see, I drop off fairly precipitously. So the recommendations from VHB's, rep VHB's report, regardless of what we did for funding, was continue crack sealing and patching. Great recommendation because as budgets go, the first thing everybody wants to cut is crack sealing and patching. With that recommendation in there, I'm able to at least maintain a baseline of crack sealing and patching, which is very, very good for everybody. 
Obviously, funding sufficient to reach the city's goals. Yeah, that's not happening. Prioritizing roadway improvements, really just looking for bang for your buck, really work preservation into the mix. Uh, don't spend a lot of money on roads that aren't gonna give you a lot of bang for your buck. Um, everybody wants their cul-de-sac done, but if it costs a full depth reconstruction, we're really not going to pursue it. We are prioritizing our arterials and heavily traveled roads on our preservation techniques. With the money that we save, it, it, it tends to be a very uh, cost-effective way to do business. These are their lower cost treatment bands that they've kind of described, and you can, I'm gonna expand on this a little bit later. Uh, routine maintenance, which is essentially crack sealing, 60 cents to a buck 20. Preventative maintenance, which they have as a, you know, for PCIs of 71 to 80, that was that first band I showed you. Anywhere in the neighborhood of nine to $12 a square yard. Um, these structural improvements that we're encroaching into with our pavement preservation typically cost 17 to $25 a yard. If I can do preservation in there, you know, I, I can actually, I can save, save a lot of money that way. Found these curves online. It was a neat little presentation that somebody had done. I think it was for T squared out west. Um, we use these to explain pavement preservation to our bosses. Um, typical deterioration curve. Deterioration curve when you add chip seal, microsurface, or slurry. Um, they're putting them in at 85. Uh, we'd obviously go a little bit lower on that. And they're showing this at giving you a, a three to five year life expectancy. Hot in place recycling, they actually have here at a, coming in at around a 67 um, PCI, giving you about 70 years, uh, seven years. And then a mill and overlay and reconstruction, coming in at 56 and giving you about 12 years. We try to explain to our bosses, you know, the first curve is low dollars, the second curve is middle, and the last one, which is what we typically do, is, is high dollar. So we, we try to use graphics to explain everything. As stated previously, we have a $1 million budget, a million and a half below what's recommended to maintain our PCI. So we can, you know, there's a couple of different strategies. We can just pave politically, find out what the which way the wind blows, try to make sure it's within an accepted, you know, you have column A, column B, don't tell me to mill and overlay a road that doesn't meet it, but if you want me to mill and overlay a road that is within an acceptable range, fine. Um, that's actually how it was done in, in some municipalities where I worked prior to Meriden. We can use a worst first, figure out, you know, find your lowest roads, just pave them. Um, or you can do what VHB recommends and follow a recommended treatment strategy. Crack seal 5%, gives us a $50,000 a year, mill and overlay 750, and do some reclamation. From 2012 to 2015, we started adding some pavement preservation into the mix. We skimmed maybe two to three hundred thousand dollars a year from our paving budget, and um, one of the reasons for that is to get a contractor on the in the door. You really have to give them, you know, there's a minimum really fifteen to twenty thousand square yards to get in the door. Um, we were able to convince some of them to get in a little bit less just to get pilot programs underway. Unfortunately, this strategy didn't really move the needle that much. Uh, we were still getting a lot of complaints, a lot of deterioration. So in 2016 and 2017, we went all in in uh, pavement preservation. We didn't issue a mill and overlay contract at all. Um, we just said we're just going to use the pavement preservation techniques that we have started to experiment, and we're just going to spend our entire million dollars, less what we set aside for crack seal, on uh, pavement preservation. Um, to do this, you really have to set realistic expectations. Uh, surprisingly, the hardest people to convince were the highway crews, because we're not using regular asphalt. They had the hardest time accepting it. They still don't like it. They understand what we're doing. They're just not happy with it. Talk to the media, especially when you're using a technique like hot in place recycling. Uh, people tend to get worried when they see flames shooting out on the roads. So you want to get ahead of that. A lot of the other techniques, you can talk to people on the side. If you're doing a stress-absorbing membrane with stone kicking up, you definitely want to get ahead of it. But if you don't, we found that if you don't make too big of a deal of it, you can address it on a somewhat isolated basis without raising too much concern. And never engage anybody in social media. Yeah, there's just, there's no way to win. So these are the preservation techniques that we utilize. Obviously, crack seal and patching. Uh, these are the combinations that we have determined seem to make sense for us. Uh, micro milling and thin overlays works out to about $10 a square yard. Um, I accidentally transposed some of the PCIs. Uh, hot in place with a, the ultra thin overlay, 12. Sammy with a thin overlay, 12. 
Um, we did one road where we did all three. It actually worked out really well, but it, the, that price starts to creep up to that of a traditional uh, mill and overlay. And then reclamations and reconstructions. Uh, something you won't see here is a uh, chip seal as a surface treatment. Uh, Meriden uh, will not currently permit chip seals to be a surface treatment. Uh, we're looking to integrate it into the in, in the future. I think there's a lot of value to it. If uh, not necessarily regular chip seal, but um, the 20% crumb rubber, uh, which we use as our SAMI. I'd love to accidentally forget to cap it one year and just see what type of blowback I get. So the benefits of incorporating pavement preservation uh, from a network level perspective, uh, this, the, the top graph is the one million, the top chart is with $1 million budget, just with the regular mill and overlay. As you can see, I get 2.6 miles of pavement done. Um, independent of crack seal. If I switch to all pavement preservation treatments, the micro mill, the SAMI, the HIP, the, thin, the ultra thin overlay, I get four and a half miles. So I'm, I'm getting almost two, mo two miles per year more out of going with alternative pavement treatments than going with mill and overlay. Obviously, there's a trade off. These roads are going to obviously, they're going to get a PCI of 100, but the deterioration curve is going to be greater. Unfortunately, we just don't know how that deterioration model is going to really play out because every road has a different PCI. The PCIs all have different conditions. Some are surface, some are base. It's really just a, a wait and see. These are lists of the roads that we've done by each uh, treatment type. Uh, 2012, we started with our hot in place recycling and thin overlay. Um, that was pretty soon after I got to Meriden. They were planning on having to do a, a skim patch on our, essentially a skim coat on an entire road. Uh, luckily, I had worked with Highway Rehab previously and was able to convince them that it was worth coming into Meriden for 11,000 square yards on a road that was actually not a PCI of, 50, of 66, it was actually a 57. Um, VHB was so concerned about doing HIP on this road that they went out and re-rated it and uh, we told them we were going to do it anyway and, and evaluate it because it was better than the alternative. On the last pavement inspection, it rated an 82. We crack, a lot of it was just cracking. Uh, we did crack seal it and it's, it's performing, you know, comfortably for what we expected it to. Right next to Murdoch was Research Parkway. The very next year, we had him come out and do 20,000 square yards. Uh, the road rated a lot higher. Uh, what was nice about this road, uh, we had two years prior done a two inch mill and overlay on the northern section of the road. So we're actually, when you drive it, you can compare a two inch mill and overlay to a hot in place recycling with a uh, ultra thin bonded wearing course on it. Uh, road still rides great, uh, it's a 94. And the benefit to this is this saved us well over $100,000 in terms of uh, comparison to a two inch mill and overlay. 2016, we did another round of hot in place with ultra thin overlay. Uh, all these roads are essentially in the same area. It's really too early to evaluate the long-term performance on them, but you know, we haven't had any complaints uh, either during construction or, or post. Uh, one of the benefits of the hot in place recycling is people don't complain in the inter interim time between laying a hot in place and putting down a surface treatment because it's essentially, it essentially looks like a, a surface treatment. Uh, another treatment we uh, experimented with was a hot in place with a microsurfacing. We did that on Miller and Yale are actually one road. It's just a, it's, it's one long road. Um, I have some photos later in the slide. You know, pretty good, pretty good evaluation. Um, one of the challenges that we had was uh, there was a DOT yard uh, at the end of Miller. Uh, it's right by the uh, Wilbur Cross Parkway. And we suspect that one of the trucks uh, after a snow event decided to leave their plow down riding the center line and uh, had some chatter which uh, we were able to address. But there was some chatter which contributed to the lower uh, PCIs. Um, some minor cracking uh, doesn't seem to have uh, propagated beyond anything after that first year though. Below that, uh, all these roads on the, the bottom section are actually a neighborhood and this is one of the ways I really envision using pavement preservation going into an entire neighborhood that has similar PCIs and just applying a technique throughout. Uh, one of the challenges you end up with in a community is you did that road, why didn't you do this road? Um, and the reality is that, you know, $18 a square yard, I can't mill and overlay an entire neighborhood. But if I can do a pavement preservation treatment throughout, it works much better. Um, 
And this, this has been very well received. We had some uh, initial complaints about, you know, just lawn damage. Uh, actually just kind of ignored those, they went away. And, uh, you know, has, haven't had any complaints since. Micromill and thin overlay, this is really, that's the, uh, the Novachip Ultra Thin Bonded Wearing Course. This has really been uh, our bread and butter for the past couple of years. We've done seven and a half miles of it. Um, what's nice is, in addition to being quick, it's relatively inexpensive and takes very little time, so it's, it's, it almost meets the holy grail of fast, good, and cheap. So we're, we're obviously going to continue to uh, evaluate this. The 87 on Baldwin Avenue, uh, there are some water patches that contributed, but there is also some cracking. Um, that may be on the bottom end of what we should be doing for this treatment. The Allen Avenue job, uh, one of the benefits of a pavement preservation is if the gas company comes in and does trenching and has to do full restoration on like a lane, we uh, worked out a fee in lieu of where they just paid us what they were going to spend. We took their money and did the entire road. Um, because pavement preservation is just cheaper than their unit cost for, for paving. This is uh, 2017. Um, as I stated, in 2016, we went all in on uh, pavement preservation, eliminated our mill and overlay program. Uh, one of the challenges is we did four or five different techniques and it got a little bit difficult to manage. We did hot in place, microsurface, micro milling, and ultra thin bonded wearing course. Uh, 2017. Um, and, and beyond what we're going to do is try and just do a couple treatments a year and maybe rotate them so it's easier for the contractors, we get more economies of scale. Uh, 2017, we just did micro milling and thin overlaying, and we actually did a couple roads with Sammy and the, uh, the Ultra Thin. So All these roads seem to work out very well. If you notice, the PCIs are all relatively the same. They're all in the upper 60s to low 70s range. Um, one of the challenges with um, doing this is we go off a of state bid. Uh, we do the micro mill off the of state bid, ultra thin bonded wearing costs course off the of state bid. So there's a delay between um, the time you mill to the time you pave. And you want to make sure that you have enough time, but not so much time. Uh, this past year, we ended up with too much time. And we caught a lot of flack from the residents. Uh, everybody was up in arms. The reality is after, after it was paved, everything died down and everybody forgot about it. So. It's a challenge with every construction project, but uh, you know, if you're micro milling, you're not exposing too much uh, to the public, but just be aware, people tend to complain if the road is, is left open for you know, a month. On that note, you do want to keep it open for a month because if you're paving a bad road, the patches and the, the pavement failures tend to work themselves out before you do the surface course, and you can actually go in and patch it and uh, address some of the base failures ahead of time. Now this technique uh, is the SAMI and the thin overlay. This is where I talked about moving that needle, where the, we typically aim for a PCI between 70 and 80. Our average PCI in the SAMI and thin overlays is actually around a 50. A lot of these are roads that it really wouldn't be worth the money for us in terms of network level, uh, in terms of traffic volumes, to spend 30 to $40 doing a full depth reconstruction on. Some of them have really bad bases. They were built by developers 30 years ago. Uh, two and a half inches of asphalt with four inches of process. You can't do anything. You can't even reclaim them because there's just not enough meat in them. So what we do is we put a SAMI layer on top, kind of binds the pavement together, and just go over it with a thin overlay. Carriage Drive East was the first one we did. Probably it's a good five years ago now, and it rated a 95. And I know uh, we drove it with all states uh, about a week ago, and the road still looks beautiful. And that's the same technique we've been doing on all of these roads. It's, it's just going with a uh, SAMI layer. Very quick, takes 45, 50 minutes, gets swept up. Two weeks later, you just Nova chip it and, and you leave. Uh, obviously, there are some utility adjustments you have to make. Um, but you know, the, life, the, you know, the, the quality of the road is, has been fantastic. Uh, complaints have been almost minimal. Uh, we didn't entire, once again, we did an entire neighborhood this past year. No complaints at all. I would have loved to have left the neighborhood in a SAM state, but uh, wasn't ready to get yelled at uh, to that level. Um, and the last uh, one, last technique we did was a micro mill with a SAMI and a thin overlay. We only, we micro milled just to provide a little extra depth so we didn't have to worry about matching driveways. Smoothed it out a little bit, gave us a better profile. Um, once again, uh, this road has, has performed great. It's been four or five years. I'm, it's still a 95, honestly. 
Um, but the, the comparison to what this would have cost to rebuild would have been astronomical, would have been close to half my paving budget. Uh, here are some uh, just very quick before and after photos. Uh, this was uh, Murdoch Avenue. This was the first road that we did. You can see there's an awful lot of uh, you know, rutting. There's alligator cracking. Uh, there's, there's base failure in the, in the shoulders. That's a 2015 photo. Um, it currently rates in 82. It was crack sealed in 2017. This was Carriage Drive East. This was the first road that we tried just putting Sammy down in a Nova chip. Um, this is the one that we, we went to. Rode it last week. It looks great. Our goal was really just try to get eight years out of it. Um, I expect we're going to get far more. Baldwin Avenue, this was um, a road that had some pavement failures. Um, has also exhibited some cracking. We're going to crack seal it next year. I own Drive uh, was another one that we did a, um, a Sammy with a, a thin overlay. Uh, there was really no base at all to this, so it was really just hold it together and put some, put some meat back on it. Uh, has performed beautifully, no complaints. You know, we don't have to think about it again for another 10 years. Yale Avenue was the one that we did a hot in place with a microsurface on. This is the one that had a little bit of chatter from some wayward plows. Uh, as you can see, there's some cracking in the bottom, but that cracking really hasn't changed much since that first year. And this one is the most important one because my boss lives right around the corner and takes it every day. Johnson Avenue is a really, really big hill. One of the reasons we chose the ultra-thin bonded wearing course was because of the uh, wet weather performance, uh, the snow performance, and uh, there have been, I don't believe there's been an accident on it um, attributable to weather uh, since we did it four years ago. So moving forward, uh, where do we go from here? Continue to use whatever pavement management software we can to help identify and cluster areas together so that we can get the most efficiency out of our, uh, out of our program. Figure out what works. You know, we're still in the early stages. You know, we, we almost have to reach the failure stage to figure out how things are going to perform. And encourage networking be with other towns. We've met with Southington. We've met with Waterbury, East Hartford, um, to see who's doing what and what works and what doesn't work, um, and just continuing that. So that concludes it. Great. Thank you. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.